What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So last week we did an introduction to extrude tools, um, which is an extension that allows you to extrude different lines into faces. And this week I wanted to show you how to use that extension in a couple different ways to create some different kinds of structures. And before I get started, I do want to take a second to thank my newest supporter on Patreon, John Demichi. Patreon, as you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing in this channel, channel, um, you enjoy what I'm doing, please make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so last week we talked about extrusion tools, or extrude tools, which is something that, uh, it's an extension that I was really excited about, and it basically allows you to create different things in SketchUp by extruding edges. So from a very simple standpoint, what it allows you to do is it allows you to take a line and create kind of a path. or a series of pads and then uh, use that to create a face. So in this case I would use this first option which would be extrude edges by rails and then I would select a profile curve which is the curve that you're going to extrude along your lines and then it's going to ask for a first rail and a second rail then it's going to ask for a melding profile. So if I wanted to make a taller circle over here or something like that and make this kind of merge into that, um, I would do that over here. In this case, you just select the first profile. And then that'll give you a series of different options. And basically, you're going to go through those, mark those up. But it'll allow you to basically take a curve and generate a face using that curve. And so that already has a bunch of different possibilities. And so there's a few things we could do just from something like this. So we could use another extension, like for example, we could do like pipe along path or something like that. So if I was to come in here and I'd probably use something like quad face tools to select my edge loops. So you can see how there's an option in here to select a loop, meaning that it would basically allow me to select all of the adjacent edges for each one of these options. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and I could select all of my loops like this, and then I could use an extension like Pipe Along Path to generate some, uh, or um, Lines to Tubes to generate kind of a structural piece. So like for example, if I was to do this, it would create a series of tubes. So you could use that to create some tubular structure in here if you wanted to. So that's one option. That's probably um, an easy way, maybe a little too simplistic in order to do this. But there's actually some built-in options within extrude tools that probably make a little bit more sense. All right, so then the next option you have if you want to create more of like a curtain wall type building is you can basically you can basically use the second option, which is um, extrude edges by rails to lattice. And so what that'll allow us to do, I'm gonna draw kind of a curving path right here real quick. And I'll probably end up welding this. So I'll draw a curving path down here really quick and I'll probably end up welding this so it's an uninterrupted line. So I'll use the extension weld. And then I'll just take this and I'll move it using the move tool in copy mode. And I'll use the scale tool to flip it. And I'll push this back over here. But then our next option, what that does is that allows us to create an object using these rails and then extrude it to a lattice. So it's a lot like the extension lattice maker, which is also from TIG. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick lattice from profiles and rails. And real quick, I wanna talk about these options. So basically this is asking the profiles is, if you remember this first line is our profile. And so the profiles in this case are the ones that go along the width. And then the rails would be the lines that this is gonna generate that are gonna go along the length. So you can use this and you can use either the profiles, the rails, both, or the diagonals. So in this case, we're gonna go with profiles and rails and click okay. We're gonna select a lattice as 3D. Um, I'm gonna say yes to erase coplanar edges. So that's all these blue lines that are selected. So you see how that gives us kind of a quad face in here. I'm gonna go ahead and reverse my faces because we want the white face, which is the front face to be facing out. And then it's gonna ask us what we want our lattice to look like. Well, in this case, I'm just gonna leave it on the defaults right here, and I'm just gonna set a pane material of glass. And so what that'll do is that'll uh, offset each one of these, and then it'll push pull and it'll create glass in here. So what you can do 
um, and I'm going to go ahead and say no to erase the original curves because I may want to come back in here and do this. So what this will what this will allow you to do is this will allow you to create kind of this curtain wall type shape, and I may even run this again um, and do a much smaller extrusion profile. So I'm just going to go back and run this real quick with a smaller extrusion profile. And what that means is we'll get more glass and less of the border around the glass. So lattice is 3D, erase coplanar edges, reverse faces. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to set our lattice width to something much thinner. So we'll do a half inch, a half inch, we'll do a quarter inch, and then an eighth of an inch. We'll set our pane to glass and we'll run it again. And that should give us a lot more glass and a lot less pain. I'm gonna say no to erase the original curves. You can see how that gave us a much better kind of curtain wall type shape. One thing I do wanna know is when you're doing stuff like this, you should be saving um, a fair amount. So Tig himself, who's the developer of this extension, said that when he updated it for 2018, um, he had to, um, it's basically a little bit unstable. So you need to save often. He said, especially when you're undoing it, for some reason, SketchUp 2018's version of this is a little bit unstable. So just make sure you're saving and you ought to be fine. Extrude Tools also has another great option built in for extruding profiles along the, uh, basically the geometry of the objects that you're creating called Extrude Edges by Rails by Face. So what that one does is that'll generate all your profile lines, but then it'll extrude a shape along those faces. So like for example, instead of coming in here and using uh, lines to tubes, um, if I draw a circle, and I'm gonna go ahead and make this a 12-sided circle because this is gonna be small and it's gonna get extruded a lot. But let's say I draw this as kind of a two-inch shape. Well, what you do with this one is you select it and then you do the same thing you do with the other tools where you um, activate the object and it's gonna ask you to select your profile, your two curves, and then your melding profile. And then it's gonna ask you how you wanna generate your ribs. So in this case, um, just to give you an example, I'm gonna do this with the profiles. And so what that means is this will generate a rib or this will generate your extrusion basically just along the profiles that this is generating, not along the rails. So if I go ahead and hit okay, you can see what that does is that extrudes this tube along all of these different rails. So you can see how this will generate all of these tubes really quickly. And if you wanted to, um, you could you could also use something like um, like steel eye beam profiles or something like that if you wanted to extrude those along a face. I kind of wish this would have generated all of these as groups instead of as individual extrusions. And I don't remember if that was like a if that was something that I missed. I'm not really sure. Um, what, what I'll do, and this is generally a good idea anyway, is I'll go ahead and make a couple copies of this off to the side just to have them um, for the different options. So we'll go back in and we'll do, as another example, instead of doing this along the profiles, what we'll do is we'll do it along the, the uh, rails instead. But basically, if you were to do the same thing over here and do it with the rails, then you would get a result more like this. So it would extrude all of these basically along each one of these points. So you can see how it doesn't do anything in here because uh, Extrude Tools isn't generating any points in here because they're just straight lines. So it gives you some kind of weird results. So you kind of have to have an idea of the way that uh, Extrude Tools creates geometry in order for this to work. So lastly, if I was to do the same thing over here and I was to do the same thing, but I was to select both profiles and rails, then it would generate something that looks more like this. And you can see how that takes a while longer because it's generating more geometry in here. And it seems like this is running slower the more extrude tools things that I do in this model. So that's something to be aware of as well. So you can see how this came in here and this generated all of these tubes along these different lines. So you've got it running both this way and also this way. So, and then one other thing you may want to try, um, if you don't like like the number of uh, tubes that this creates, because it creates it along each one of these points, um, you could probably combine these two methods. So you could probably use this to create your tubes this way, and then uh, you could probably use something like, you could go ahead and you could use extrude edges by rails over here, 
to generate this as a face. And then you could select a couple edges and just use an extension like lines to tubes or pipe along path. I don't know if pipe along path will work with three different selections like this. We can give it a try. Yeah, you'd have to do one at a time. You could do lines to tubes, but they wouldn't be quite as uh, they wouldn't be quite as uniform. But we can go ahead and give it a try. So if you wanted to, you could generate these individual tubes separately using something like this geometry. And then you could combine the two. So you could use this to generate the lines that you wanted this way and then the other extension to generate it the other way. So there's a lot of different options of things that you can do in here once you kind of understand the way that this works. And then the last thing you could do is you could also use an extension like Flowify in order to generate your structure and then bend it along a shape. So like for example, if I was to come in here and create a path and kind of weld it together and then use extrude tools to generate an object along here. You can see what this does is this gives me a nice shape with four corners, which is exactly what Flowify wants um, in order to work. And so what I could do is I could um, soften the edges in this object in order to make it a smooth object, but then I could, um, I could use Flowify to generate a structure and bend it along that object. So if you remember the way Flowify works is you have to have like a target line. So you have to have a pair of target lines and then you have to have a flat face. And so what I'm doing, I'll erase out my default model, is I'm basically drawing a box that has the same dimensions using these lengths. So in this case, I'll draw a 47 foot two line over here and we'll test it with impose grid. And so anytime, so this basically imposes a grid that kind of shows you how this is gonna break up a bent object. But what you could do is you could come in here and you could basically draw some structural pieces at whatever, whatever profile you want, but also whatever um, size that you want. And I'm gonna explode all of these objects because Flowify requires raw geometry. But if I was to take these and I, I was to use Flowify, what this'll do is this'll bend all of these objects along this shape. So you could use this and you could draw some, uh, some uh, profiles that go along the length as well, but you could use this to basically generate all of that different stuff. And you could come in here and you could smooth all of that. So those are nice smooth pieces, but that's another option for creating some kind of cool structures using extrude tools. So that's where I'm gonna end today's video. Uh, felt like it got a little rambly in there, but hopefully there was some useful stuff. Um, leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Um, was this useful to you? Would you like to see more info on any of these extensions? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.